Hey everyone and welcome back to Planet Zoo and welcome back to Hirscheck, our Planet Zoo Black Forest project and today we are going to build the Eurasian Lynx Habitat or better to say it's actually going to be a Lynx Reserve because it's again just as the other habitats um, only a partially uh, enclosed habitat the rest of it will be free in the wild but more about that in the real time part. Now stick with me this is one of my best builds. I'm I know I say that rather often, but I think it's a good thing because that means I'm improving constantly and builds get better. But this one in particular is um, pretty awesome. And there are some reasons to why it is so. Um, but I want to start with the first and most obvious one. The Eurasian Lynx is a great animal and I was lucky enough to see one in the wild once in my life, um, which... Uh, they are not really that common over here. I mean, they are not like super, 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 super mega seldom, but they are very, very hard to see. And um, it's kind of a lot of years ago when I was on a on a walk with my grandpa back then. Um, we saw one, and that was that was really, really special. Um, but I think these animals, just in general, have something special, you know, especially here in, in Europe, because these are the only, like, I don't want to say even big cats, because technically they're not, but, you know, bigger cats um, that live in the wild, and um, otherwise we only have some foxes and stuff. So it's not like that. We see lions all over the place. So they are kind of, you know, kind of special. But also, because I'm building this in a wildlife or, you know, um, open wildlife reserve kind of style, um, in, in German... You say Wildpark um, or Nature Park, whatever you want to say that. But uh, Wildpark is most likely the um, translation that would, you know, make most sense. And I, I think they have a special place in my heart because as a kid you've been dragged there so often um, by grandparents, parents and so on and so forth. It's like it's like a different type of zoo to me because. Um, in comparison to an actual zoo, where you have a lot of animals that, you know, don't really live in your area, the lynx and, you know, in these wildlife parks and wildlife reserves, they have only local animals. And I think this is, in specific, uh, a very good thing, because this is something where you learn about your own environment. And to be fair, the, you tend to forget about what kind of amazing animals live over here. And I want to basically, con um, not control, but just... Uh, yeah, more or less, um, uh, you know, uh, just get myself back onto track and say, hey, you know what, I just made a little mistake by anticipating that the Europe pack wouldn't be so cool. Because at the end, I need to correct myself. These animals are great. It's just a matter of perception that I thought they are not as cool simply because I'm so used to them. And this is a classical um, mistake, a very common mistake that people do about things that they think are very common, but they are not. Like it's a it's a typical case of uh, you know selective perception. For me, it is special, but for many other people, it's not. Um, no, the other way around. <laughs> for me, it's not special, but for other people, it is. And this is something I really thought about a long time during the last couple weeks. And this is also the reason why I'm so happy with this project because I finally can enjoy something that is so used to me and start to see the beauty in it again um, which it starts to get a lot more you know philosophical here but it really I really mean that by heart now having a kid and being on the verge of doing you know exactly this again now with my kids opens my eyes again because my little one has not seen a deer in her well actually she has last time we've been there but maybe she hasn't perceived a deer yet but all of these animals that I'm so used to because I know them by heart, she's never seen in her life. And for her, a lynx is as special as a lion or as a dragon. You know what I mean? It's There is no difference for her because she has to learn that everything the same way. And seeing that from a perspective of a parent now really, really, really brings you down, back down to what it is all about. It's not that things are not special by default. The thing that makes them special is the perception of them. And this is why I love this episode so much, because I took my time to really think about these reserves I've been to myself. I looked at a lot of photos that I have myself, but also on the internet. Um, I browsed through different uh, locations on Google Maps that I know we've been to, um, especially in the Black Forest as well, but also here uh, closer to us. 
And um, I figured that I want to do something that really comes close to what I enjoyed seeing. And so I wanted to really bring this back into, into this video and I'm, I'm very happy with how it turned out. Now I think it's finally time after five minutes of this very long intro uh, to talk about the, the real build here. And uh, I wanted to have different things embedded that I'm a big fan of. And this, this specific thing we're working on right now uh, is something that becomes a lot more common in actual zoos as well, but it is very common in these wildlife parks and especially in foresty areas, simply to get a bit more of a subtle way of granting views to the people without disturbing the animals. Because as zoos build habitats on their own, first of all, and they're completely man-made, in forests you do something different. You basically take the nature that's already existing, you take their habitat and you build something into this and you want to make this as subtle as possible to not, you know, make the animals go away because, you know, the more you get involved into their um, natural habitat, they will most likely not be there anymore. And so this is why I'm make, making this uh, sunken viewing area down here. You can see I'm really trying to... Um, you know, smooth that into the habitat. It's really very low on the ground if you are inside of the habitat. I'm going to show that in the real-time part. But um, for the guest, it really grants a beautiful view from almost eye perspective or eye level with uh, the links. And I think, you know, these type of things are really super special. And I even made these little steps so that you can put your little ones on top of these steps so they can actually watch as well. Um, so very important because, you know, they want to see things you know they are not as big as you so you have to give them give them the space to view and also put them high enough now um <laughs> making the roof here out of these little birch pieces um looks cool but it wasn't intended uh, i tried several things but i ended up using these mainly to avoid the climbing issues in this game i really had a hard time only using pieces that are non-climbable pieces and I guess Frontier has to really fix that issue. I really need a toggle that also says non-climbable. Because, oh boy, is this a nightmare. The climbing... And as much as I love Frontier, at this point, the climbing, especially of big cats, is so broken that it's no fun anymore to play with it. And I'm most likely ignoring it at this point. I'm trying to build habitats that look cool and I'm not even trying remotely to make this functioning anymore because it, it won't. No matter what you do, you can't even use the prefabs, you can use the simplest of pieces. They will glitch all over the place and it's very sad to say so, but I just completely um, ignore it at this point. I really hope they fix it somewhere along the next month, so that would be amazing. But other than that, I'm just ignoring that and just go full in, full on making habitats look good. Now, speaking about the habitat again, it is very important to mention that the lynx um, can jump. <laughs> they can jump quite crazily. And I kept that in mind uh, to really make sure that they, first of all, obviously, as I said, that they can't escape via these climbing issues that we have in the game. But also, second of all, that we have um, a lot of jump-proof fences. Um, so they're quite tall and they have also this kind of overhang to ensure that they can't jump over it, even though it would technically be low enough. Um, so you have this overhang so from the inside. So yeah, I, I really do hope that helps. Also made like a little custom lantern over here. Tried several things uh, because the pieces are so small now that you have so many possibilities to make custom lamps that I figured, you know, just do one as well. And I wanted to have something, yeah, some some kind of little lamp that is very common in these foresty little shelters, you know, almost like a, a hunter would have them. Uh, I wish I would have like a little lantern, but the lanterns are still too big and I wanted to have something even smaller. Also, I'm very sorry for subtle cuts in today's video. My voice is still not 100% back and I am uh, trying to find my voice here and there. So I'm just uh, cutting a little bit and drink something just to ensure that my voice is back for a couple of seconds. Now, um, things have to be told. <laughs> we are here in... Uh, is it actually... I've, I'm not even sure if that's the first uh, Planet Zoo of the year. I think it is. So for all Planet Zoo fans, Happy New Year if I didn't say that uh, already. Now... <clears throat> 2022 is going to be a special year um, 
for me on this channel. And I want to quickly give you a little insight. If you guys are not interested, um, I highly recommend to just uh, skip forward to the real-time part, which is about 14-ish minutes into the video. And until then, I'm going to quickly talk about that. For those of you who are a fan of all the details of this build, I'm going to, as always, talk about them in the real-time part. Now, speaking about my channel, I am very, very happy with the development last year. I really wasn't sure what the development will be, especially with the little one, because, uh, you know, it has been the first time that I got daddy and I had no idea how it, this will influence the channel. The only thing I knew was that I wanted to continue. Um, I had no idea how exactly that's going to work and I'm very happy with how it worked out. Uh, obviously, I don't really have that much time as I had before um, and for this year, that means that I will somehow try to um, yeah take upon that change and uh, embrace that change now that means I'm trying to get into a stiff rather stiff schedule that means we will have videos every Wednesday Friday and Saturday that is my target for this year and um, it will obviously change during DLC and game release times when obviously I have to stick to the dates that you know announcements blah 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 happen but for everything else, which is the normal kind of content, it will be on these days. And I'm even trying to juggle between currently Planet Zoo, Jurassic World Evolution 2 and Prehistoric Kingdom. I won't say anything to a certain focus or balance. At this point in time, um, I, you know, I can fair and square say that uh, Jurassic World Evolution 2 videos are doing by far the best on the channel. Um, the Planet Zoo is by far the best game for me when it comes to just creating stuff because I'm so used to the game and Prehistoric Kingdom is somewhere in between having a great toolbox but being a little bit itchy still because of beta and um, the you know, uh, I think the perception of this game has to be developed over the beta. So um, they're very different games and this is what makes them so great. And I think they're a great choice to play around with. Um, so you will most likely see a lot more different kind of content, but um, I'm very much looking forward to how that's going to play out. And this also means that for the moment, I am not sure when exactly franchise is going to be returning. I'm trying to, but that might then add another day um, and rather another day it would be double episode on one day because I want to stick to the days so potentially it could be a double feature on Fridays um, to stick with the franchise on Fridays and then have another video but this is something for the future I will make a video about and the next thing is this year I want to reach 100,000 subscribers that is the only uh, notable goal I'm going to set myself I'm I don't care about views or whatever this is the only thing I want to reach it's kind of something that makes me feel that my journey here um, is is not finished by not by any means, but it is almost like the respect for for what I've done over all these years um, that I want to see happened. I guess in a way, it's very hard to put in words uh, because it's something you you know being recognized as like a certified YouTuber or whatever. Um, is something at this point I really would love to achieve, I guess. And, you know, you guys are the ones who can help me. Uh, for those of you who are not subscribed yet, but, you know, you like the content, you want to help me out, a little click on that subscribe button would obviously help me out tremendously because that's the easiest way to, you know, just help me out. But this is the end of uh, the talky talk part, the voiceover part. We are skipping over the real-time part and I promise I'm not going to talk about boring stuff like that. I'm going to talk about the build and the reason for that is you have to see it in game it's looking so much better in game so i see you at the other side of the cat until then enjoy the last seconds Well, actually, there were not that many seconds left in the speed build, but here we are in the real time. But I have to get the game on pause for a second because we will first of all have a look at the habitat before we see them in action, um, or not. Uh, I'll talk about that at the end. Um, so this is the this is the whole area, and I think this yeah this this goes down in history as one of the most complicated areas ever to capture in a screenshot. Like legit, I had 
no freaking idea how to make a you know fitting screenshot for youtube i mean i should have done something like that you know and i mean lady came around with the idea to delete some trees and stuff to make it brighter but here you can actually see the the problem that planet zoo actually brings with it um when you have shadows it's just it looks so much better with the trees in but it looks so much darker and that's that's a little bit of an issue but i want to say something about this uh habitat in general there are way too less trees in for the moment um this is just a showcase but i will make it actually super dense i want to give this the real foresty feeling and uh yeah we have to do that anyways let's go a little bit more structured and this is the badger habitat we've done last time so badger habitat over here and then you go around that corner and you have already this little uh, hut over here that drags your attention a tiny bit you have to go up here and now over here you can see already uh, uh, quite nicely from the side the lynx habitat and this view over here is pretty classic this could also be like in a zoo like a little you know like a little net structure or mesh habitat very classic very 90s inspired you know um as you see that in in some german city zoos and stuff uh, for bigger cats they had these things quite a lot before they have been um you know fortunately forbidden and changed into different ones um now you have these fences quite a lot in these wildlife reserves as well. You can see there's a, like a little bit of a um, colored uh, plate down here, like a little plank that makes sure that you can't really view it too much from the f you know foreground, so to give them a bit of privacy. And only if they are you know roaming around a little bit more in the trees and stuff, you can see them. Um, to see them a bit more up close, you really have to get a little closer. And you can see I made this custom wall uh, separated a little bit from the mesh, so you are not really as close to it um, as you should be because you know you don't want to grab your hands through here i want to really make sure that they have their privacy uh, because that's again is a wildlife reserve it's not a zoo and this is hopefully something that this habitat pays through to now you can see you can go along here and then you can see the links just moving down here i really like this shot i really like this area in general i think it really looks pretty pretty cool um because it it translates the idea of the habitat very nicely um, you can also see like this little rock in the back where they can go and you can see the platforms that they can jump from one to the other if we go down here you can see there is this a uh, little uh, access area for the hut it's a very simple one you know there's not really that much going on here um, but this is also not as in zoos because that's just like a winter shelter for them. But as they can always go back into the forest, they maybe have their little holes and caves and stuff where they live in anyways. And this is just to, if they want to come here and maybe they're, you know, ill or sick or whatever, then they can get in here. But, you know, normally they are not. And this is the little underground uh, viewing uh, that I've talked about. And you can see there is a lot of education going on over here. I, I used the old screenshots from Yosemite, but no one can tell. So whatever, <laughs> you haven't heard that. And over here you can see another like little education about the Eurasian lynx. You can see that uh, the concern is the least concern. That's the conservation status of this one. And you can see a little Wikipedia uh, article about this. Now, turning around here, you can go up and you can see this is your view into the habitat. Unfortunately, there's no one over here to be seen right now. But we will hit play and hopefully there is someone coming over. This is mostly what I wanted to talk about. But just one more little view at the back there. You can see there are little gates where you can or where they can actually go out of this uh wonderful area and over here this is our beautiful themed staircase now bringing you up into the area which will be for the ebex this is going to be here uh, but this is another cool little viewing opportunity of the links and oh boy this is kind of a cool view as well i haven't tested that so often anyways let's hit play oh cool this one has get for whatever reason gets boxed cool i don't know exactly why oh look at that one it's just going to chill down below the platform um i'm a big fan of this i haven't seen that one i like when they use these kind of cozy little areas was that the vet actually i think the vet actually took this one okay never mind let's have a little look over here we can't see it from this spot can we whoops where am i can i see it ah not quite that's unfortunate. I thought you could just see it through here, but it's hidden pretty well. Let's see if the other one is coming around. Oh, it is. It is. It is coming around. Look at that. Hey, where did you go? Where'd you go? Oh, it. Ah, I've never seen them jumping on here. I made it so that they can actually roam around on this thing and then just uh, take the tree to go down. But honestly, these animals just jump quite a lot, as you can clearly tell over here. A little bit of paw licking. Like it. 
Okay, you know, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna drag that one over because I want to bring this one in front of us so we can see it. So let's go down here because I just want to have that viewing once for you guys. Look at this. This is how cool it can be from from down here, uh, just getting the links in your view and i think this is so cool because you're on the level and just standing over here gives you that beautiful view of the links in the habitat yeah i am a fan of that i'm a fan of of how this all works out i'm a fan of the foliage from the euro pack uh, just in general i think it looks super cool um it opens a lot more possibilities to build cool reserve style things and yeah, just some more European things. But I wanted to talk about hey, the climbing for a second. Oh boy, yeah, I hope Frontier is watching. God, this is actually I'm very sorry, and then then again I'm not because I have to show that it's I don't really understand, and I have to show that maybe someone has a solution, maybe not. But look what happens now. And I just want to quickly point out that these pieces are the new climbing pieces that came with the 1.8 update. So they should be optimized for animals. But are you just both? Are you kidding me, right? Okay, see, this is what I needed to have for a cool screenshot. And you guys are just like randomly doing this for me now while I was about to showcase something to the people. Look, there's a little bit of a poopy poop thing here. I, thanks for nothing, I guess. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, <laughs> anyways, I'm just going to speed up so that they just stand up finally again. Yeah, just make both a little bit of sleep. Are you kidding? This is, this is like, okay, wait. This is, this is insane. I wanted to, hello. There you go. And you go, you go here. Oh yeah, yeah, just poop one more time. Now, okay, so now we see things happening. Okay, that was a relatively good jump, but now look look at what happens here. What what on earth is going on? Like Tell me why, okay? I'm just going to hit this and show you. It looks all pretty clean. There's not really loads going on here with the clamping, and I'm very confused to why they do this. I'm very confused, and I really, really hope. Oh, look at that. Can we get friendly babies? Let's have a little look. Did it work this time? And it didn't. <clears throat> now, well, whatever. Anyways, guys, this is it for today's episode. I just wanted to showcase that, unfortunately, it's not really working that well. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. I certainly did enjoy that quite a lot to build. It was a very, very fun build. Um, I think it fits absolutely perfectly fine into Hershek as a, as a whole. And yeah, there is a lot more to cover in the next episodes. Now I need your help. If you guys want to support the channel and you haven't subscribed yet, uh, please consider doing so. That helps me a lot. And this year, as I said already in the time lapse, I want to reach 100K and I can only do this together with you guys. So if you like the channel, you've seen already some videos and you, you like what you see, please consider subscribing. It just doesn't hurt you, I promise. Uh, except you hit your finger too hard that might be a thing but um just don't do that okay so <laughs> that would be amazing and um yeah please let me also know what you guys think we should do with Hirschek, what type of animals we should bring in and uh, what is your favorite thing you're looking forward to in 2022 um in relation to games so thank you so much for watching as always have a wonderful hump day and i see you in the next time Six, uh, whatever in the next episode i just completely failed my outro so stay safe everyone and until the next failure of me have a good one goodbye <laughs>